I'm Catherine Diorio. This week on Check Please, data analyst Gino Williams says that he's a sensational source for all things Italian in Chicago. And he's got his number one pick for Piemonte perfection. But sales exec Anna Marzullo says even though she knows all about Italian cooking, she says her destination delivers the delicious goods from all over Asia. Up first, student Julian Haida could write a dissertation on the wonders of Ukrainian food. He says for pastries, breakfast, and borscht at its best, make your way to Chicago Avenue and stop in at Chocolade. Chocolade is a European cafe, first and foremost. We started as a pastry shop, and that's why we have a pastry case right here. And definitely authentic Ukrainian food. Ukrainian food essentially is comfort food. It's something that makes you feel warm inside. We pride ourselves in beet soup, borscht. That is the king of all soups here. Lots of soups and lots of potato, lots of pork, root vegetables. My mom's the chef here. We are friends in every meaning of that word. And she's there for me, I'm there for her. We get along better than most. <laughs> She really puts her heart into it and the, the time that it takes to make each thing and it really shows in the taste of it. So Julian, you say chocolate makes you feel like you're in a cafe in Ukraine. Tell us why you chose it. Because that's that's exactly why. I mean, I, I go to Ukraine a lot. I've I've traveled all over Eastern and Central Europe, and um, every time I go there, I I just feel like I'm there now. It's one thing to have a Ukrainian restaurant that that's kind of kitschy and old style, but it's completely different to have a restaurant that um, makes it feel like like you're there. Ukrainian food is at the intersection of a lot of parts of Europe, a lot of parts of Asia. So you have dumplings like you'd expect in Central or East Asia, foods that are agriculturally based, so potatoes, really hearty stuff, comfort food. And then you have the European influence, things like paninis, little fine salads, oils. And for dessert, the Napoleon tort, which actually when my grandmother was in the hospital a few months ago, she wasn't liking the hospital food, so she she went for... Uh, snuck some in there. <laughs> exactly, so I snuck her in from chocolate, a little Napoleon, and, and from then on, you know, her, her recovery kind of really sped on up, <laughs> so I don't think the nutritionist at the hospital is very happy, but it, it got her on her feet. So Gino, you kind of prided yourself on finding little hidden gems. What'd you think? Actually, I had passed by chocolate several times uh, because I thought that it was just a bakery. I was indeed surprised to find the cafe component, um, the authenticity of the food. And I have a lot of friends who are from the Ukrainian area, who are from Russia, who are from the uh, Eastern European area. And to be able to go with them also and have them say, this reminds me of what my grandparents actually cooked. This is what my great grandparents cooked. This is what we grew up eating. I found it a very inviting place. I absolutely adored it. Same thing, I thought that it was only going to be a pastry and coffee place. Mm -hmm. um, I went with my future mother-in-law for lunchtime, early lunch around 11. It was definitely quiet inside of there, but mm -hmm. I, I loved it. It was intimate, it was a perfect break from the day. I look at the menu and there were rich dishes, there were comfort mm -hmm. food. I love comfort food. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I go to eat, I eat. I just love food <laughs> and I want to enjoy every <laughs> last morsel. The waitress was so knowledgeable. So we instantly said, okay, we want to try something savory and something sweet. She did recommend the veal cutlet for our savory and it was, it was delicious. It was cooked perfectly, it melted in your mouth and I was so shocked that this little pastry place could whip me up a veal cutlet at 11 a.m. and it'd be delicious. And for our sweet, we got the Ukrainian sweet cream um, crepes. They were delicious. At the end, we thanked her um, for our meal and said how great everything was. And it seemed like she really took it to heart. And there was again, pride in it. Yeah, and yeah. I, I love that. There was there was a lot of pride to it. Well, it's not an unwieldy menu, uh, which is one of the good things. Right. So it seems as if though they primarily focus on a lot of what I would consider their signature dishes. What would you get? Uh, well, actually, I started with a borscht, authentic borscht, and you can always tell when there is authenticity in the dish. 
And then we had one, and they called it a shushka pachanya, which is this Very clay. Good Very good. <laughs> Very Very it's good. this clay pot mm -hmm. of beef stew with mushrooms. And I also started off with uh, what's called the Ukrainian fried chicken. That was truly a highlight. We also did a round of Varenike, so we had the regular potato and cheese pierogies. We also had one that had tarragon and it. it was like mushroom and tarragon. Right. And we got that to go as well because it was so good. You know, it's interesting because the dumplings, they, you know, as you notice, Gino, they have very traditional ones. So, you know, cheese or potatoes. And, and then they do these different fillings. Um, one of them has a curry filling mm -hmm. in it. And so they said, so it's Ukrainian food. We want to do traditional, but we want to be modern as well. Well, and kind of add that. So there's definitely something for the new generation of Ukrainians as well as those that want a little taste of home. So Julian, tell us a little about the neighborhood. I know you love all things Ukrainian <laughs> and this is set in Ukrainian village or on the border of, so. That's right. Um, I mean, it is, it is the neighborhood of Chicago where Ukrainians have lived for well over 100 years mm -hmm. and the churches show for it. Yes, so you exactly. Are <laughs> so it's a very kind of uh, close community and I think a lot of people are very taken aback with some of the gentrification, but a restaurant like Chocolat means that uh, the Ukrainian community is kind of opening up to the people who now live there, mm -hmm. and I think that's very exciting. Well, Julian, you chose Chocolat and sum it up for us. Chocolat is your authentic, contemporary uh, Eastern and Central European uh, culinary experience. Anna? Chocolat would be a great place to bring family, to bring friends, your future mother-in-law. <laughs> Don't just go and think you're going to get a pastry. You might end up with an entire veal cutlet and still have leftovers. <laughs> Great. And Gina? Uh, I would say that if you want to get a feel of being transported to Ukraine, uh, Chocolat would certainly be the spot. You can try the Ukrainian delights for yourself at Chocolat, 2524 West Chicago Avenue, 773-276-6402. Open for breakfast and lunch, Tuesday through Sunday. Reservations are accepted and the average tab per person is $15. Anna Marzullo says that any spot that's been packing them in since 1954 has got to be great. That's why for family, friends, and much more, she travels to North Avenue and always looks up to New Star. It's a, a old-fashioned Cantonese uh, style cooking foods. Our uh, egg rolls, I think they're best in Chicago. And also we have uh, beef, orange chicken, Cantonese lo mein noodles, and especially Hong Kong steaks. This year, we're adding Thai foods in our menu. Also, we're adding sushi. I feel it's great. The people coming, I would like them to uh, have a nice share the feelings with their families and the friends. They were happy, they were, wow, this place is beautiful, this place is clean, wow, uh, anybody smiling make me feel happy by the end of the day. Anna, you've loved New Star for years. Tell us why you chose it. Oh, 
and I have to touch my heart when I say this. Um, I have been going here since I was a little girl. I grew up just north of the Elmwood Park area on the Chicago mm. border. My dad was a city worker, so we have to have that Chicago address. <laughs> but my dad had been coming here as a child. Obviously, he brought my family here, and it's just, it's home for me. I had one of my first dates here with my now fiance back mm -hmm. in high school. Um, but besides all the memories that are around New Star, the Chinese American food you can get there is amazing. You can get what they call the poo poo platter. Mm -hmm. So you get an assortment of crab rangoons, egg rolls, spare ribs, beef teriyaki, and your own mini hibachi grill. Mm -hmm. And it's just fun. It, um, as well as their fun tropical drinks that they have. So you can get fun tiki drinks and little Buddha cups with umbrellas and cherries and all the garnish. And mm -hmm. it's just a happy place. You look around and there's families, there's friends, there's couples, there's old couples. I love to see the old couples in there, it's the cutest. <laughs> and they have their little hibachi grill and they're passing each other the beef teriyaki stick. And it's, it's just a very warm and friendly and fun experience. So Julian, what do you think? Uh, more or less the same thing. Uh, it's 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 your typical American Chinese, but it's just done a l just a little better. I had the uh, shrimp lo mein, and I also sampled a little bit of the, some of the appetizers. And it's not over salted. It's not over greasy like you sometimes get from a neighborhood yeah, takeout very place. Very fresh. Yeah. Yes, it's always fresh there. Mm -hmm. And it's just you know it's you can tell the vegetables weren't frozen. I mean it's no. it's just you know it's not it's kind of. <laughs> 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 they will not do that. Not my new star. <laughs> so and I mean. It's just, you know, it was, a, it was just a nice experience. Great. What about you, Gina? So there was a good experience for me. Uh -oh, there were no, no, no. <laughs> I, I will listen. Uh, there were a few dishes that were very, very mild mm -hmm. on the palate. What they was that? were very good. There was the Sea of the Pearl. Okay. Uh, the Pearl of the Sea. The Pearl of the Sea Got was it. one. There were lobster, scallop, mm -hmm. shrimp, of course, mm -hmm. and everything. But it was a very, very mild dish. Okay. Another one that was very good. It was uh, uh, the Thai curry. Now, I must admit that there is a soup that they have on the menu, which is their hot and sour Thai soup. Okay. It was absolutely fantastic. And as a matter of fact, we went back a second go around and we did. actually had that. So during the second visit, yes. we did have the uh, Thai hot and sour soup again. Uh -huh. And also during the second time around, we also had another dish which is called a roti mm -hmm. and it's a Malaysian mm -hmm. dish yeah. uh, that you eat culturally that is served with a roti and you eat it with your hands yeah. you eat it with your fingers and we had that as well so I would say that a lot of the non-Chinese dishes were definitely standouts for me. Definitely not to cut you off I'm sorry recommend um, the Hong Kong steak that they have mm -hmm. is unbelievable there it will melt in your mouth my dad got it the last time we were there as well as my fiance got the Peking duck, but it, out of this world. Absolutely and I do have world. to give you a tip. If you want it spicier, you know, they do put the little chili pepper on there to kind of Szechuan pepper to show, hey, this is spicy, but you can ask them and they'll kick it up for you. Right. So Gina, when you, when you go back, who would you take there? Wow, I would probably take uh, quite a few of my friends who um, have not actually had any exposure to Chinese food. I think this would be a good way to get them into it. And they have a very extensive menu that you can actually right. choose from. How was the service here? It was very relaxed and very courteous. So I was there with uh, a good family friend, and for example, we're on our way out, kind of meandering onto the sidewalk, and and uh, two of the of the servers kind of ran out and held the door open. And you know, it's just not always something you always get. Um, so it was it was very courteous and very very friendly, which is is kind of refreshing for this kind of city, you know, big city like Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Great. And something I just have to add. So they just did a complete face model. You would have not recognized that restaurant whatsoever. And actually when I went back more recently, I took my parents who hadn't been there in some time. The back half of the restaurant hasn't been remodeled yet. Um. And my dad actually wanted to go in the back <laughs> because he was so sentimental about it. And my dad's kind of like this big, oh, hey, oh, you know, I'm, I'm Russ, you know, hey, Chicago, I'm a city worker. <laughs> so like for him to get sentimental over New Star, it was like, I it, like brought tears to my eyes almost. The Moy family owned it for many years. Yeah. Um, and it recently changed over in the past few years and the new owner decided to expand the offer. She's, she is Chinese, but she decided to expand yes. the offerings, kind of have some more, more Pan-Asian offerings, since mm -hmm. there's a sushi bar mm -hmm. now, and Thai. And, um, and that area yeah. is, you know, there's always been restaurants there, but it 
is definitely becoming, it's not just Johnny's beef anymore, <laughs> exactly. you know, so. Exactly. Anna, you chose New Star, sum it up for us. Yes, New Star is the perfect place to bring your parents, your significant other, your elderly grandparents will love it. Come and experience what Elmwood Park has to offer and what the northwest side of the Chicago area has to offer. Great. And Julian? Classic American Chinese uh, at its best. Right. Gina? Yeah, I think that it is definitely good uh, classic American Chinese with great service and it's a seems like a very very good family restaurant too. You can judge for yourself at New Star 7444 West North Avenue 708-453-8242. Open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are accepted and the average tab per person without drinks is 20 bucks. One thing's for sure, Gino Williams has broad tastes in food, but when he found an Italian spot that focuses on one specific region of the country, he was hooked. He says for the pasta and more from Piemonte, join him at Armitage at Osteria Longe. I think they expect it to be transported to what is really the, the essence of what Italy is. Italy, it's amazing. I mean, that you go from the east to the west, from the north to the south, there's so much to discover. The region is Piemonte. It is the, the hidden gem of Italy that I think is just starting to be discovered. Landlocked, so it's a lot of produce, it's a lot of beef, uh, porcinis, truffles. Boy, truffles are the, the, probably the king of the ingredients out there. A lot of people, I always tell them, you know, this is not like you big bowl for pasta that we expect because people sometimes tell, unfortunately, this is what they think, you know, it's a value. Um, for us, the value is really about the taste. It's about the enjoyment. The wines, we know the regions are really good. The food, people don't know much about it, but when you go there, it's to die for. We're doing something we believe in, and moving forward with that, I think that, you know, it just, it, it's built an environment here that and it's both a culture that people have loved, and if you make people happy, they're gonna come back. So Gino, you say Osteria Lange is unique and outstanding. Tell us why you chose it. Well, it's not your stock Italian mm -hmm. restaurant. You're not getting spaghetti, and you're not getting lasagna. You're probably getting rabbit. You're getting seafood. You're getting dishes in a savory sauce as opposed to a red sauce. You're getting uh, dishes in a creamy sauce as opposed to just uh, an Alfredo. There's also a bit more of closeness in the restaurant. It's intimate, smaller, like it you would is, find. Yeah, is, and you also find yourself uh, quite often engaging individuals who are sitting immediately next to you in conversation because you're that close. You simply can't help but to, so. Well, my fellow Italiana, yeah. Anna, so you said what did you stock. think? That made me, I don't know how I feel about the stock Italian. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it. I, I really did. So it's definitely different than what I am used to growing up. So my family, my father's side, the Italian side is from Naples, so Southern Italy. So mm -hmm. we do eat the lasagnas, we do eat the pastas. Um, so for me, it was definitely a different experience, mm -hmm. um, only because that's not normally what I gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. But it was great. I went with my fiance for mm -hmm. a date night, which was more than overdue since we are in mom and dad's basement right now. <laughs> so we actually got a hotel downtown for the night. We made like a whole event out of this. Um, it was perfect uh, for a date night. It was very intimate. The service was impeccable. So we started out with the uh, Vitello Tonato, mm -hmm. so the veal. Mm -hmm. I 
I did like it, but I wasn't crazy about the tuna mayo aioli on the side, which I know that's customary. I know that's how it's, it's very, very traditional. I know that's that traditional. Right. I, I, I doesn't mean you have to like it. It doesn't mean I have to like it. So I did end up just eating veal on its own. And then for our entrees, I did have the prosciutto wrapped rabbit. Mm -hmm. I never knew I liked rabbit, so my dad has made it in the past, and I've never tried it. The truffles in the rabbit, I mean, the sauce, the fanti with the mix with the fantina and the creamy polenta, I was literally like spooning off every last bit. Like yes. my fiance and I sh shared our dishes and he had the duck and the duck was good. It was a little gamey for me. Um, and it's only supposed to have an orange zest to it. Maybe it was just an off night, but it was like heavy on the orange. I, I had but my, the rabbit. My <gasps> friend had the duck too. So I had the rabbit. I guess I, yes. I, I have that intuitive sense. Yes. Yeah. My friend got the duck. Uh, and it was, yeah, same thing. It kind of felt inconsistent. Yeah. Um, I was there with a few of my classmates. Okay. And when we got there, we got there a bit early. I uh, kind of put into like a back corner and just yeah. it, it feel, felt oh. kind of like we weren't really, really, I mean, paying yeah. attention to. When the server came over, he was very courteous. Um, but, you know, there were certain times where, you Did know, he'd walk right past us. The night? And, uh, I think a little bit. You could tell the other kind of patrons were kind of like, you know, who are these young people? You're not, you don't yeah, fit in. So you know? like an yeah. age issue, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, which, you know, it happens. It yeah. happens. Um, but uh, it's for, for, for the amount of money it was, I can imagine going with my fiance on a, on a yes. date. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't think I'd, I'd take my classmates there. Okay. Um, but, and I would agree with you on that as well, the price mm -hmm. point. Um, um, something that I love about the more Italian comfort restaurants that I am used to, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, Osteria Lange also has a uh, prefix menu on Tuesday, so right. it's their trifecta Tuesdays that right. they have. And also with that kind of setting, it's not necessarily, you know, we're just going to you be <laughs> no. heads down, right. chowing down, Absolutely not. but it has also a slight European feel to it. Cameron Grant is the chef, and he actually owned an osteria in the Piemonte region, even though he's Scottish born, actually. Um, but uh, he had a love for the ingredients, a love for the region. The Piemonte region is actually one of the largest rice producing mm -hmm. regions in the world. Mm -hmm. So that's why you really don't see a lot of pasta. There's maybe two pastas right. on their menu, but you do see the risotto. They do put a lot of time into kind of changing that out. Even so. when they do pastas, like the raviolis, they're like little pillows of heaven. Wait, is this a special? How did I make It's the called clean. Yes, they're always on the menu. Yeah. Always on the menu. It's clean, and they're little bitty pillows of heaven, and they're stuffed with this Latour cream. There is another one called a tajarin, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is also a pasta, but it's done mm -hmm. in the fantina as well. Mm -hmm. Because they also have a seasonal menu, so you don't get your summer menu during the fall and the winter, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. keep changing those out. So it's generally a surprise. You know, the Piedmont de Region is there's these terraced hills, which makes it ideal for vineyards. It's where you get all those beautiful barolos, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I took a wine class in college. I'm n by no means an expert, but I had a lot of fun <laughs> going through the wine list. It was, it was, and, and you know, in that regard, the server was very helpful. It was just so fun to kind of really dive into what the flavors are, how it pairs with what I was eating, and you know, you don't always get that kind of experience. So that was very refreshing. So Gino, you chose Osteria Lange. Sum it up for us. Fantastic Italian food in a bistro environment. A bit of a European feel. Great. Julian? Uh, I'd say it's uh, growing pains for the restaurant in the neighborhood, but uh, you know, I'm sure that the inconsistencies will work, work themselves out eventually. Great. And Anna? Perfect date night spot. If you've never tried rabbit or if you love rabbit, go there and try it and you will find out that you are a fan of those little bunny rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> you can try the pastas and pairings at Osteria Lange, 2824 West Armitage Avenue, 773-661-1582. Open for dinner every day, reservations are accepted, and the average tab per person without drinks is $40. So on this week's show, we featured Chocolat in Ukrainian Village, Osteria Lange in Palmer Square, and New Star in Elmwood Park. Let's recap what our guests had to say. First, we showed up on Chicago Avenue and checked out Chocolat. Julian recommends it because the atmosphere and cuisine transport him to Ukraine. Gino said the authenticity, price, and quality of his meal will have him returning. Anna loved the intimate ambiance and had a delicious meal. Next, we navigated down North Avenue and visited New Star. Anna recommends it because she's been going for years and loves their fresh Chinese-American cuisine. 
Julian said his meal was great and the service was surprisingly superb. Gino liked the extensive menu and welcoming atmosphere. <music> Lastly, we cruised over to Armitage and dined at Osteria Lange. Gino loves it for the unexpected and excellent approach to Italian cuisine. Anna said it had a great atmosphere and was perfect for date night. Julian liked the food, but felt the service level was so-so. We've had a wonderful time this week. I want to thank my guests, Julian Haida, Gina Williams, and Anna Marzullo. Join us next week for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check, Please. I'm Catherine Diorio, and I'll see you then. Cheers. Thanks, guys. You guys were awesome. And I loved all the restaurants, so it was like... For more information about the restaurants featured on Check Plays, go to wttw.com slash checkplays.